Humans have always used their social bonds as a strength in overcoming adversities. Whether it would be to fight off ferocious predators in nature, defending their village against outsiders, going on the offensive in the hunt for prey, or to exterminate enemies of their particular way of life. The strength that comes with numbers has always been undeniable. But like a double-edged sword, great numbers come with a price. And for within great numbers, differences in opinion would become inevitable. Segmentation and tribalism would divide the group's purpose. And in the social commotion of faltering alliances, individual opportunists would often see possibilities for violent exploitation. The hunting grounds of Louisiana were home to several different factions during the late period of the 19th century. These factions were ultimately opposed to one another, not just in their respective stance on their purpose in the bayous, but also their moral compass, religious inclination, and potential destiny in the afterlife. These factions all left their individual mark on the cataclysmic event that unfolded in Louisiana, in one way or another. Some united to fight against evil, some united to become part of the evil, and others just took part in the atrocities for their own greedy benefits. And within this first chapter of Hunters, you will find all three aforementioned subjects. An old saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And nowhere is that as true as with the American Hunters Association. Also known as the AHA, instated in Louisiana by Dr. Huff Jones, the director of the organization, preceded by his father before him, the American Hunters Association was a well-established community of naturally gifted hunters who had been engaged in the hunt for paranormal activities and demonic entities for hundreds of years prior to the Louisiana event. The intentions of the AHA's presence in Louisiana was to contain and rid the spread of the corruption, as they had done with several other incidents throughout history. But as time would show, that was far easier said than done. The organization was by far the largest operating faction within Louisiana, mainly due to it opening up the trade of hunting through the distribution of serum known as the inoculum, which enabled anyone who wasn't a naturally gifted hunter to venture into the bayous without immediately succumbing to evil. And while this accessibility to the common person gave a surge in members of the AHA, the director, Dr. Huff Jones, diverted his attention to personal matters, conducting atrocious experiments on live human subjects within his asylum, instead of tending to the ever-growing cesspool of greedy and power-hungry degenerates who would flock to Louisiana in the hopes of living out their wildest dreams of killing and plundering. At the same time, the AHA had plenty of researchers active within the bayous, tending to the understanding of the evil they were facing finding and cataloging behavioral patterns, methods of attack, and weaknesses of each monster roaming the swamps. But this knowledge, however thoroughly cataloged, was inefficiently passed down to the active members within the organization, resulting in poorly trained, uninformed, and inexperienced hunters venturing into the bayous, unaware of how to overcome any of the deadly foes they would face within the swamps, having to resort to a trial and error style approach where only the strongest managed to survive. And while other factions had camaraderie, trust and integrity, sticking together within the hunting grounds as allies, it wasn't uncommon for AHA members to openly stab each other in the back for their own personal gain. A physical manifestation of the expression, every man for himself. In the end, the internal power struggle would see conflicts of interest clashing, as numerous people within the organization felt the corruption within Louisiana was to be put to an end, essentially saving mankind from the torment of evil influence, while others wanted to keep the bayous at a status quo, letting the demonic entity stay active so they could continue to partake in the endless opportunities of hunting and slaying of both demons and mankind, in what can only be described as a sick and twisted funhouse for only the most greedy and deranged humanity had to offer. 
the indecisiveness of Dr. Huff Jones in terms of a judgment call would ultimately lead to his demise as he was killed by one of his own subordinates, a woman by the name of Lynch who deemed that the organization was rotten to its core. The death of Dr. Jones led to the organization crumbling from within. Huff's partner Finch would step in and take over the remains of the failing organization, leading a group of loyalists still devoted to the cause of the AHA which at this point was clouded like murky waters. Finch would break off into his own faction, which in turn led to more and more independent splinter cells forming in the power vacuum that followed. One of those cells was the Knight of the Hunter, a blood cult founded by the Nightseer. Known by other hunters as a so-called Doomsday Cult, they eagerly awaited the death and destruction of our world, and these hunters thrived on the demonic presence and welcomed it with open arms. Known associates of the Knight of the Hunter included the Knight Acolyte, among others. They were a group of radical fanatics obsessed with the blood of the demons they hunted. They considered the demons themselves and the blood within them a holy artifact, a source of otherworldly salvation that would save them from the death in this world when the ringing bells of the apocalypse would begin to toll. They used the blood of the demons for both cosmetic decorations as well as powerful incantations written onto their skin and clothes, rumored to have granted them both powerful abilities as well as shielding them from the effects of darkness. On the opposite side of the Night of the Hunter was the Devoted, founded by Isham Gerd, the creator of the Healing Waters Church, who also went by the simple name of the Reverend. This chapter of fanatical Christians preceded the AHA having been present in Louisiana for more than 20 years prior to the demonic event and was devoted to cleansing the swarms of evil by the righteous force of God, smiting the hellish fiend in their divine crusade for the greater good. Driven by an unyielding desire to gain the appeasement of God, Isham, who was once a joyful preacher, would slowly turn paranoid, fanatical and angry, leading him to motivate his subjects through fear, horror and intimidation, preaching of nothing but the ruthless eternal torture that awaited them in the afterlife should they fail to find redemption in this life. However, the devoted grew too fanatical and lost most of its influence within the Bayus. Only Isham and his most devoted followers remained. Isham and the devoted have been credited with predicting the arrival of the sculptor in Louisiana, almost as if they sensed this diabolical energy converging on them, or as if they had been given a sign from a higher power. The fate of Isham himself, however, was believed to have been the result of a curse from a widow that drove him mad, letting his own anger consume him in a raging hellfire of unstoppable fury. Similar to the devoted in terms of religious faith, but with a completely different purpose in life, there were the sinners. While very little is known about them, they were believed to be primarily Muslim of religious faith, Sinian the gun poet and John Hayward Hunter were both believed to have been members of the sinners a chapter of hunters who believed themselves damned for their actions of becoming hunters. These particular individuals had nothing to lose in this life or the next one, making them extremely dangerous adversaries who had little to no disregard for their own life or safety. And in the middle of all the chaos within Louisiana, there was also the law. This is where it becomes difficult, if not completely impossible, to define the officers of the law as a direct faction within the Louisiana hunting grounds, mainly because the moral compass of the individuals within the law of New Orleans varied like night and day. On one hand, you had Marshall Brewer, a selfless woman who went above and beyond the call of duty to infiltrate the AHA in order to figure out just exactly the organization was hiding within the bios of Louisiana and why they hadn't been successful in the original mission they set out to do. Her mission was selfless and strictly devoted to the salvation of the people within the swamps. On the other hand, you had Sheriff Harden, where Marshal Brewer would venture headfirst into the swamps, potentially sacrificing herself in the fight for the greater good. Sheriff Harden had a much more cynical and sinister approach to the removal of the demonic entities within the bayous. Convinced that the end always justified the means, Hardin's approach to ridding the world of evil was to fight fire with fire. Recruiting convicts and orphans to his cause, Hardin would send armed adults and children alike to their dooms within the swamps, 
hoping to starve out the demonic presence by overwhelming it with sheer numbers. And while his methods of sacrificing both men and children might have seemed cruel, sadistic and downright inhumane, he served an important role in halting the spread of the corruption within Louisiana. However, the convicts and orphans he recruited proved unreliable, and because of this, he ended up contributing to the chaos that followed both before and after the collapse of the AHA. In the middle of all this death and destruction, a particular community stood out among the others, namely the Voodoo community. While lacking an official name, this chapter of 100 devoted to Dr. John, also known as the Bone Doctor, was certainly not unknown within the hunting grounds. The roots of Voodoo are deeply tied within Louisiana, and associates of this particular chapter were well known to be adept in the arts of dark magic. And while the Bone Doctor himself was an omen, dreaded to be even mentioned among other hunters, due to the rumors and urban legends circulating around him, other members, such as Felice, were slowly gaining notoriety as well, with rumors suggesting that she was able to shapeshift at will, taking on the form of dark feline creatures. Of her associates includes the Weird Sister, though not a lot is known about her. This particular chapter of Hunters were rumored to be accomplices of the devil, fighting for the corruption and not against it, having gained untold amounts of dark power through their connection with the other side. Allegedly, the Bone Doctor possessed an inhuman ability to heal and recover from wounds, so obscene that it was rumored he might have been the sole cause of the very plague everyone was fighting within the bayous. However, people spreading these rumors didn't live for long, as Dr. John, who might have been the most misunderstood individual of the demonic Louisiana period, retaliated against people who had persecuted him for his religious beliefs. It was suspected he had been the victim of Christian propaganda from hunters who feared the practice of voodoo, subjugating him to lies and misinformation about his actual intentions within the bayous, which by most accounts suggests that he and the rest of the voodoo community was actually fighting against the sculptor, but as several sources seem conflicting on the issue, it will remain clouded in mystery until more information surfaces. Besides all of the chapters and factions within Louisiana, there were of course also a lot of individual agents and independent hunters. And while most hunters will agree that it was always wise to have someone else watching your back, some hunters favored not having the off chance of getting stabbed in the back by the hunter who was supposed to be looking out for them. Some hunters would refer to the principle of having strength in numbers. However, when the integrity of a given chapter's members is suddenly drawn into question, and several violent sociopaths are looking to fill several positions of power. Numbers won't matter for long when former colleagues start tearing each other apart. Hey there, Hazmat here. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. It all helps a lot more than you think. A big thanks goes out to the Hunters Lounge on Patreon, who helps me decide on future content, and which you can join for a single dollar a month. As always, I want to give a big thanks to Rexley, his knowledge of Hunt Showdown is simply immense and he has contributed a lot to making this video. I also want to give a big shout out to Tip for providing creative feedback and constructive criticism. A big thanks to both of you guys. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.